Good afternoon, Colorado. Thank you for joining us. This will be our final COVID-19 update uh, of the year. I wanna wish everybody a safe and healthy, happy new year. Uh, for those who celebrate Christmas, I hope you had a wonderful holiday. As 2021 comes to a close, I know we're all taking stock of the year. The good, the bad, uh, with the new year just days away, um, I wanna reflect a little bit on where we are in the pandemic. And of course, to say thank you, Colorado, uh, for weathering this year better than most. Um, uh, well, uh, of course, we, we mourn um, th those who we lost. Uh, we should all be proud as Colorado. So we had the ninth lowest death rate per capita in any state in the country from COVID-19. And your perseverance throughout this pandemic has really embodied the Colorado spirit. Protecting yourself and others, wearing masks, getting tested, uh, having one of the higher vaccination rates in the country, and now leading on uh, protecting our five to 11 year olds, which will also help our state uh, lead on keeping our schools in. Uh, right now, as you know, Colorado, the rest of the country and most parts of the world are experiencing a major infection increase from the Omicron variant. Just to give you an idea of how contagious this variant is, just two weeks ago, it was only about 1% of infections in Colorado were Omicron. Most of them were the Delta variant. Already, just two weeks later, Omicron is over 91% of the infections in Colorado. We know that from the 16 or 17% of the uh, tests that we segment. And, and we've now uh, established over 91% of the cases and rapidly increasing. That was data around uh, 23rd through 25th of December. It's probably uh, well into the mid 90s by now. If you get COVID, there's a very high chance that it's Omicron variant right now in Colorado and across the world. Uh, we're joined by Dr. Eric Franz, Colorado's chief medical officer, to shed some light on the CDC's uh, updated guidance on quarantine isolation. There's a lot of you asking yourselves, I, you know, I'm vaccinated, I have a mild cold, I tested positive for COVID, what do I do? Um, so Dr. France will inform you that the good news is if you've been vaccinated, especially if you've been boosted with all three, uh, the risk of having a severe health outcome from the Omicron variant or the Delta variant is very minor. Uh, but we also see, uh, again, rather tragically that those who haven't yet made the decision to get vaccinated are being sent to the hospital uh, with both Omicron and Delta in increased numbers. Hospitalizations have increased slightly. We're at 1,088. And again, only about 20% of those are vaccinated. 80% of the people being hospitalized are unvaccinated. Uh, and we can avoid uh, much of the hospitalization and severe health in impacts uh, if people make the choice to get vaccinated. And if you've been vaccinated twice, please go ahead and get uh, that, that third shot. It's a critical part of protection, especially against Omicron and especially now. Um, uh, before I, give, I talk more about where you can get tested, vaccinated, we're making it super easy. Uh, I'll turn it over to Dr. France to give an update on the CDC and Omicron. Dr. France. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, very happy that we have new recommendations coming from the CDC that are clearly aligned with what we understand uh, the science to be for this new Omicron uh, virus variant of COVID. We've spent yesterday updating our CDPHE guidelines to align with the isolation and quarantine recommendations from the CDC. Um, there were actually two recommendations that were released, one last Thursday, the 23rd, focused on healthcare workers and specific recommendations for that uh, group of workers. And then uh, on, uh, I think it was Monday this week, we saw the general population recommendations. And um, these were changed because of the differences now with this new variant of, of Omicron uh, and what the biology of this virus uh, acts and how, off, how much you shed and when you might be spreading it. It's really changed over the course of this pandemic. As an example, I'll start by just talking about a Christmas holiday party. If this were a year ago and you were exposed, breathed in COVID virus uh, in 2020 Christmas, your symptoms would occur about six to seven days later around New Year's Eve. That's what we saw with the alpha variant. Now, manage, imagine instead that it was uh, a Halloween party on Saturday and you breathed in the Delta variant. Your symptoms would start on 
today, actually, four days later. So it's a shorter incub incubation period with Delta. And now we have Omicron and the incubation period is even shorter, one to three days. So if I had been exposed to Omicron on Christmas day, I would have likely have had my symptoms on Tuesday of this past week. I also stopped shedding the virus more quickly. And as such, I can return to work uh, a little earlier than I could have if I had caught the original alpha or the Delta variant. And that's what we see in these new recommendations. The updated uh, guidance says that if you test positive as a general population grocery worker, yesterday, for instance, you tested positive uh, or, or developed symptoms yesterday, you should stay home for five days, isolate yourself so you don't shed it to other people through this Sunday. But then Monday through Friday of next week, you could return to work and we would say you would need to wear a mask. So there's been this nice change that will get our workforce back in if they've been infected with COVID. It also impacts the way we quarantine. If you have completed all recommended doses of vaccine, for instance, you've gotten the booster, or if um, you're too soon to get the booster, uh, you're still considered up to date with your vaccination, then uh, if you've been exposed, you can continue going to work, uh, participating in your activities, and you should wear a mask over the next 10 days. Um, and then if, if you're a healthcare worker and you're up to date, you too can go to work and, and wear a mask for 10 days. If you're not up to date with your fully recommended, let's say you've gotten your two doses, but you're due for your booster and you haven't had it yet, that's when it will be important for you to stay home for five days and quarantine yourself, but after five days, you may return and go out wearing a mask. So these new recommendations align nicely with the changing biology, the changing infectiousness of this Omicron variant. And they're very important for us because as we all know, we have staffing uh, challenges across all areas of, of our economy, healthcare, transportation, and having folks be able to return back to work because they're feeling better, they have no fever, their symptoms are improving, and it's been five days, uh, means that they're back helping all of us with the day-to-day -day work that needs to get done. So uh, this is an important change, and it makes good sense based on the Omicron biology. And I'll turn it back over to you, Gov. Thank you, Dr. France. Um, a lot of people <clears throat> were really asking questions about what it means for them, especially with the Omicron variant going around so much. And again, if Coloradans, if you get COVID-19, the chances are very, very high it's the Omicron variant right now. Um, we know as of last week, over 91%, I fully expect it's over 95% now. So the chances are that's the variant you have. Um, and um, what that means is uh, the monoclonal antibody treatments, uh, most of them do not work well against uh, Omicron. So those are not available, unfortunately. There are a few uh, treatments for people that are highly at risk. And then, of course, there's the secondary treatments if you need hospitalization in terms of uh, the steroids and other treatments that are needed. Uh, but if you're vaccinated, and especially if you've got all three doses, the chances that you'll need to go to the hospital are very minor. Treat it like a cold. Uh, probably one of the biggest risks is dehydration. Make sure to drink a lot of fluids. Uh, there have been patients that have uh, simply had to be hospitalized for dehydration because they haven't kept uh, fully hydrated while they're experiencing COVID. Uh, Colorado's dry and uh, make sure to do that. If you haven't been vaccinated, first of all, get vaccinated, please. Uh, if not, you absolutely could have severe health consequences. Uh, hospitalization death is occurring regularly. Uh, and if you're having trouble breathing, severe cough, uh, please consider going to the hospital uh, so that you can have the very best treatment with a chance of getting better. Um, I know there's a lot of interest uh, in, in people getting tested before holiday travel, after holiday travel. I wanted to share with you how to do that. Uh, we have over 150 community testing sites across the country. Very easy to check. Uh, and, you know, uh, sometimes the, you know, you'll find one where there's a line one day. Uh, there are, you know, 100 others with no line at any given time. So uh, I want to make sure people know that. Like anything, they tend to be a little bit more crowded you know, around in the morning, you know, before work and after work, uh, less crowded during the day. But uh, generally speaking, uh, the people are flowing right through most of the day, no lines. 
Uh, we have a lot more capacity in Water World Thursday through Sunday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Dick's Sporting Goods, uh, Coonsville Art Creative Arts. By the way, these are not just for testing. You can actually also get your booster, your third shot there. You can get your first shot if you haven't had it yet. You can get your five to 11 year old kids vaccinated. So they're full service centers. We do encourage that you uh, you book online, uh, you know, to make sure you have a slot there. Uh, COVID19.colorado.gov slash testing. If you want to do that, just sign up for the vaccine, COVID19.colorado.gov slash community dash vaccine dash sites. You, they're all linked from our main page, COVID19.colorado.gov. They take walk-ins, but if you don't want to wait, uh, you might as well sign up. There's uh, thousands of slots today, tomorrow available at, at all of these different locations. <clears throat> um, there's also test testing available at Colorado School of Mines. 1922 Jones Road, Monday through Friday, uh, 7 to 10 in the morning and 3 to 5 p.m. Instructional support facility on South Riviera Way in, in Aurora, Aurora, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Chapel Hills Mall, Colorado Springs, daily, seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Rocky Mountain Prep on 3752 Tennyson Street, Denver, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5. Dick Sporting Goods, seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. They're closed on January 1st. Uh, down in Durango, Fort Lewis College Stadium, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Grand Junction, Colorado Mesa, Monday, uh, 7.30 to 3.30, Tuesday through Friday, 8 to 4. Pueblo County Fairgrounds, every day, 8 to 5. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, these sites here, you can get vaccinated or tested. Plenty of capacity. Uh, most of the day, it flows right through. If you want to set up an appointment ahead of time to make sure you don't have to wait, that's even better. But uh, please, stop by. Get that third vaccine you need it for omicron and of course you can get tested as well um we're continuing to grow our at home rapid test program uh tests were being delivered within uh four or five days i think it's now up to about 10 or 11 days because of the increased demand but i want to make sure people know those are not if you're experiencing symptoms right if you're experiencing symptoms you don't request the binax test you go get tested at a pcr testing site um because even if you were to test positive on the Binax at home, you'd want to go confirm it at a drive-through testing site. So at the end of the day, the vaccine is our best defense against Omicron and any other variation of the virus that we know about. Uh, if you are fully vaccinated with all three doses of the vaccine, you have very little to worry about getting very sick with Omicron. You, you absolutely could contract it. You might not even know you have it, which also makes it dangerous for those who are unvaccinated around you. You might have mild symptoms for a day or two. Uh, you're very unlikely to need hospitalization. However, if you are unvaccinated, this is still very, very deadly. I encourage you to get protected. Uh, you can find out where to get vaccinated at covid19.colorado.gov slash vaccine. And for those of you who've had two doses and are wondering about getting a third, there's no better time than now. We're heading right into the Omicron uh, peak and uh, you need the three doses to give you protection against Omicron. I also want to share some success of our program to protect our schools and keep our schools open. Uh, for over a year now, we've been providing free uh, surgical and KN95 medical grade masks to students and teachers as part of our um, approach to, to protect people from the pandemic and keep schools in session. That becomes even more important with Omicron. I wanted to give a quick, quick update. We've distributed more than 40 million surgical masks to schools and more than 7.5 million KN95s, including more than 4 million child-sized masks. Um, cloth masks are simply not as effective as surgical masks, and then of course the very best gold standard KN95 masks. Those are available to teachers and students in school. Uh, we uh, offer them in, in a number of different colors, and I applaud all the schools that uh, are participating in this program. If you'd like your kids' school to participate and they're not, please let your principal know. Uh, we absolutely have the capacity to serve more. We have an additional 3 million kid size masks that we have allocated for Colorado schools in January um, as staff and students return. Uh, for schools that haven't signed up but want to, you can go to cde.state.co.us slash safe schools and then you can click on the mask program there. Look, Omicron is here in Colorado, over 91% uh, of cases, probably in the mid 90s by now. Uh, having three doses of the life-saving vaccine protects you very well. 
two doses protects you uh, some degree against hospitalization, severe health outcomes. But uh, yeah, of course, what science indicates is that the three doses are very, very important. Um, I strongly suggest uh, not having large New Year's parties. Um, wearing masks around others indoors, always a good idea to add that extra layer of protection. Simple steps. We have the tools we need. We have the plenty of vaccines. We have plenty of testing. Our hospitals are not in need of uh, additional capacity at this point. We're about 50% lower from where we were just uh, a month or two ago. However, we're expecting that rate to continue to increase with the Omicron variant uh, among Coloradans who are unvaccinated. So I want to wish everybody a safe and happy new year uh, with your loved ones and family. And with that, I'm happy to take some questions. Our first question is from David Perry. Go ahead, David. Hey, Governor Dave Perry from Sentinel, Colorado. Some of the state data shows that there's, it looks like an increase in breakthrough cases in vaccinated uh, residents. And I was wondering if the state is tracking of how many of those breakthrough cases are from boosted residents. And also, um, it, it looks like that there's been a, a pretty substantial drop in just the last few days in hospitalizations. And I wonder if Dr. France would like to comment on that. So the, the data shows that the Omicron variant is far more capable of penetrating through a person who is vaccinated and infecting them. But if they're vaccinated, they don't get the severe health outcomes. So it is spreading faster. There are people who are unvaccinated who uh, get Omicron and don't even know it because they're, they're, they're not sick or have a mild, very mild illness, but it is still just as severe. We believe it's just as severe for people who are unvaccinated. So uh, it seems better at penetrating the vaccines for infection. So I would expect that those breakthrough cases will go up, but I don't expect the breakthrough hospitalizations to uh, go up significantly and they're not yet going up significantly. So um, it's yet another reason to get the third dose. We are working on best ways to present the data around breakthrough with people who've had two full doses and three full doses. Uh, we'll probably have additional transparency around that very shortly. But all the data that we're seeing globally, including in Colorado, is that having three doses gives you much higher level of protection against the Omicron variant. Dr. Franz? Yes, that's right. And uh, regarding our hospitals, it's true that we've enjoyed since early December a decline in hospitalization rates uh, for uh, COVID. And, and that really seemed to he hit the bottom around this past Saturday, our hospitalizations have started to increase. In general, our experience has been that once cases go up, hospitalizations tend to go up about two weeks later. And so I was thinking it wouldn't be really till next week, but clearly I think even this week we'll start seeing a rise in hospitalizations. The hospital leaders tell us that currently um, things are manageable, though they do see that more will be coming their way, and uh, they are getting ready for that. Thanks. Next question is from Nicole Brady. Go ahead, Nicole. Hi, uh, Governor Polis. Um, Nicole from Channel 7, thank you. Uh, you mentioned schools, and I know the state has taken a, a, an approach of letting districts make their own decisions this year, but do you have any advice now as kids go back next week, um, what schools can do? I haven't heard of any putting out plans yet to t require tests, which we've seen at some uh, districts in other parts of the country, um, or to go remote, or uh, it doesn't seem they have a plan for what's going to happen if several teachers get sick and we've dealt with a huge substitute teacher crisis this year. Uh, so this seems like it could be a really a bad thing for schools when they start again next week. Uh, any thoughts on that? So uh, I would encourage schools to sign up for our free uh, mask program. We have kid size masks, uh, teacher masks, millions of them. They are uh, surgical grade masks. Uh, They're the kinds that doctors and nurses would wear in COVID wards. So if, if folks who want to be protected are wearing those masks that we make freely available to every child, every teacher, uh, it significantly decreases the risk of COVID transmission, much more so, much more so than uh, the cloth mask that some kids might be wearing. So I would encourage you to take advantage of that. Uh, surgical mask, KN95 mask uh, being the very best, the last KN95 mask. 
Uh, we also uh, have testing available free for every student in every school. We would love to see more school districts sign up for that. Um, it's been steadily increasing since we rolled that out. And yes, um, an excellent protocol that I would encourage school districts to look at would be testing to return uh, to make sure that you're not bringing in a significant COVID infection. Most importantly, get your kids vaccinated. My seven-year-old and 10-year-old are proudly uh, fully vaccinated. I encourage every parent to do the same, especially in the face of the Omicron wave. Our next question is from Meg Winger. Go ahead, Meg. Hello. I have two questions for Dr. France. Um, I wanted to clarify, you know, early on there was some this and some confusion maybe about whether Omicron was milder for everybody, but it sounds like from what you guys were saying, you think it's just looking milder because it's a lot of vaccinated um, people who are, are getting sick. Um, so or getting breakthrough cases. So I, I wanted to understand just what um, if there was a consensus on whether it was actually inherently milder at this point. And the second part is you said how people could possibly go back with masks when their symptoms were improving. And I wondered if there was any kind of standard on when you how to decide if you're, you know, improved enough that you can go back out. Yeah, I don't know that we do have quite consensus yet. Um, it's evolving. It's challenged because Omicron is in different places in different parts of the world with different histories of infection in the population with their own natural immunity or protection versus vaccination levels. And so I typically am looking more to the Northeast and other places where um, they seem to be ahead of us when it comes to the Omicron uh, increase. And it does seem like in those places, hospitalizations are uh, a lower rate. And so um, the risk of hospitalization seems lower. Of course, with the sheer volume of people that will be ill, a small percent will still be a large number of people and can be uh, difficult for our hospitals. Uh, it's important always too to remember that these vaccines are meant to protect against severe disease first uh, and not necessarily um, prevent the infections. There could still be some infections happening through breakthrough, but if people aren't hospitalized, then the vaccine is, is clearly working. Um, and again, your second question was about returning with mild symptoms. And so really at day five, five of isolation, you should feel like your symptoms are all but improved. You haven't had fever over the last days. You've been bored maybe the last two days because you really want to get back to, to your work to help your colleagues out, but you have to stay in. Uh, I think that's kind of the approach you should take when you're deciding that you're good to go back to work with a mask. Our next question is from Claire Cleveland. Go ahead, Claire. Hi, yeah, Claire Cleveland, Colorado Public Radio. Um, Dr. Franz, you touched on hospitalizations in an earlier question and said hospitals are preparing. Um, but this morning we got a note from a nurse in the metro area. Um, it was pretty strongly worded, describing a dire hospital staffing situation. The nurse used the word cataclysmic and said, now is a good time to panic. Um, can you elaborate further on what can be done to help understaffed hospitals, especially considering that the rest of the country is in um, you know, a fairly similar circumstance. Thank you. Yes, I, I haven't seen um, the email. Um, and uh, it's important that we at the state stay in close contact with our hospital systems to understand how things are changing. Um, I think with Omicron, things change very quickly. And so what might feel calm today could be um, a bigger challenge, even in just 48 hours. Uh, and so uh, we've done a lot of work, as you know, to create um, a, a combined hospital transfer center that will move patients around to balance the load. We've done work to bring extra staff in to help with our hospital systems. And so I think that close partnership and the preparation that we've done to date um, will be helpful. Um, it will be interesting for us to really see um, what this surge means for hospitals. Will it be um, a mild bump or will it be um, an overwhelming bump? You know, I think that isn't clear in Colorado or in the country just yet. So 
I think the preparations we're doing are, are helping to support hospitals so that they can manage whatever may be coming. Our next question is from Dan Beatty. Go ahead, Dan. Hello, Governor Polis. This is Dan Beatty with KRDO News Channel 13 down in Colorado Springs. You guys kind of already touched on this, but I'm going to ask it in kind of a different way. So COVID positivity rates have skyrocketed in Colorado over the past two weeks. According to results from UC Health testing sites within the state, the positivity rate currently sits around 27 to 28%, but just two weeks ago, that number was at 6.7%. The Colorado Department of Health has seen some similar trends as well. How are you interpreting these numbers? Is this just Omicron or are there other factors in play? And usually a rise in positivity rates lead to a rise in hospitalization soon after. Are you expecting that here? Governor Muted. We've seen Omicron grow from about 1% of the cases in Colorado just two weeks ago to over 90%, showing how infectious it is. If you've had all three doses of the vaccine, uh, you can expect very mild symptoms and you might not even know if you contract it. If you've had two doses, also uh, fairly effective at preventing hospitalization, but don't put off getting that booster dose. It, it provides additional protection against Omicron. If you haven't been vaccinated, uh, you should be very careful over the next few weeks. Uh, we have a very contagious variant, uh, deadly if you're unvaccinated, uh, highly contagious. Uh, first of all, get vaccinated. But in the meantime, since that takes uh, a month or two to build a protection, wear a high quality mask around others uh, and get tested regularly. Um, this is a time where we have a lot of tools in our tool chest, new treatments, highly effective vaccines, plenty of surgical grade masks for those who want to wear them uh, that we simply didn't have in prior ways. So I know the people of Colorado are up to it uh, and we'll get through these next few weeks however difficult it is. Our next question is from Katie Pelton. Go ahead, Katie. Hi, Governor. Katie Pelton with KKTV 11 News in Colorado Springs, too. Thank you so much for holding this update and all of them, as usual. Um, two questions for you, Governor. The FDA is saying that those at-home test kits, the antigens, might not be as good at detecting the Omicron variant. I assume that would also apply to the at-home kits that are being sent out by the state. I'm wondering if you guys have any more information on that. Do you know mm -hmm. how effective they are? Are experts working on some new tests that may be better at detecting Omicron? And also, second part of the question, we're seeing some really long lines at testing sites here in the Springs. I know other places are in the state. Do you anticipate the state opening up more testing sites or maybe even turning the vaccine sites into like dual testing vaccine sites? Thank you. Yeah, so we have a number of dual that you can get vaccinated and you can get tested at the same site. We are planning an opening more. I encourage folks who want testing to go to Chapel Hills Mall, 1710 Briargate. It's open daily, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, we hear that while it might be a little crowded around 6 p.m., generally during the day you flow right through and get tested. Um, these are the PCR tests. The at-home Binax tests tests are used for regular maintenance and screening, meaning you can test yourself before you gather with others on a weekly basis. But if you're sick, you shouldn't wait for one of those to arrive in the mail. Uh, you should go to get a PCR test at a drive through site or a clinic or a hospital that are widely available throughout the region. Uh, Pueblo uh, State Fairgrounds in Pueblo is another site that offers uh, vac vaccines as well. So they're quick, they're easy, they're drive through. Uh, we have three or four times the capacity that is used every day. It doesn't mean that there's never a line anywhere, but generally speaking, people flow right through and you get tested very quickly. Uh, and I encourage folks to do that if they're experiencing symptoms. Our next question is from Seth Clayman. Go ahead, Seth. Hi, uh, Seth and Lizette. Uh, Dr. Francis, for you, it's uh, basically a follow up about testing. Can you talk about the level of testing you're seeing, the number of people seeking testing, and how it compares to previous waves, and what you're expecting for the next few weeks? And what is the turnaround time for stay lab or return a, a positive test? Thank you. Sure. Um, we're fortunate to be in a time now where we have a lot of easy access to testing in the state compared to a year ago, six months ago even. And so um, I would expect that the number of cases that we actually catch is going to be much higher now than when we were doing this a year ago because we just have such better testing. So while you see case numbers will probably 
past the numbers that we had a year ago in large part is because we have so much more testing that we have now. So that's a great thing because you know if you're positive, you can isolate yourself from home and protect the people at your work and your loved ones by being, being careful not to spread it. So that's been great. Our turnaround time at the state lab has been averaging between one and a half and two days. It varies here and there depending on the occasional bump from um, a contracted group or a holiday or something, but uh, our turnaround times have been good within two days for our PCR tests. Our next question is from Sarah Flowers. Go ahead, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah Flower from KSUT Four Corners Public Radio. Curious that if there's an update on the number of pediatric hospitalizations that the state is seeing and if there's an update for those parents uh, with children under five that are anxiously awaiting vaccine updates. Uh, yes, let me get that for you. And I also want to highlight Fort Lewis College Stadium uh, has free testing available Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m and Saturday, 8 a.m. to noon. Uh, with regard to the current pediatric hospitalization numbers for our state, and I apologize, I usually report those at the top of every call, and I meant to do that today. We have 26 kids under 17 and under hospitalized. 10 of them are zero to four, and 16 of them are five to 17. In a brief com conversation with Children's Hospital earlier this week, uh, I asked them if they were seeing a rise in pediatric cases as has been reported in the Northeast United States. And they told me they had not at this point. Um, and I, I would add that um, this variant, the Omicron variant is clearly, clearly far more contagious than the Delta variant. We, we see that because it went from 1% to 91% in two weeks. That's, that's almost unprecedented. So what you are likely seeing with kids uh, is that because it spreads more, even though the chance of any kid being hospitalized is very, very small for Delta or for Omicron, uh, it's very likely that there are more kids that have it and don't know, and therefore uh, some more might be hospitalized. So I think that's the most likely explanation for what some areas are seeing and what we might very well see here. Uh, again, the most, the best measure any parent can take if your kid is five and up is get them vaccinated. Our next question is from Ivan Rodriguez. Go ahead, Ivan. Hey, Governor, good afternoon. I know you briefly touched on this, but I wanted to, to ask you again, how, how concerned are you with all the New Year's Eve events that are taking place across the state, several events across the Denver metro area? We are seeing so many cases and what could come into next year and, and just hundreds of people going in. I know some events are vaccinated only, some are not, some require masks. Um, how, how concerning is that from you looking at this just 48 hours out? Well, you know, um, I, I was, uh, you know, young a few decades ago, and I used to go out sometimes. And I, I knew that when I went out, um, I, I could could easily contract something to be sick for the next week. Um, if I, if I was fully vaccinated and young, I wouldn't be too worried about contracting COVID. You might absolutely might get it. You might also contract something else. You're very unlikely to get very sick, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't be careful, right? Like, let's say you're young, you're vaccinated, you go out. You, you have a mild case of COVID, you want to be very careful not to be around your 68-year-old uncle who didn't get vaccinated or your 82-year-old parents who were vaccinated but just went through a chemotherapy regime and are 82 years old. So so be smart, right? Be smart. Um, it, it's out there. It's contagious. You have a high risk of getting it if you go out. Uh, obviously, that risk is reduced a bit if you wear a mask. But as long as you're fully vaccinated, hopefully with all three doses, the risk of you getting severely sick from the Omicron variant are very, very small. Our next question is from KDVR Digital. Go ahead. Hi, Governor. It's uh, Alex Rose with Fox 31. Uh, I understand and respect that this is a COVID briefing, but I'm hoping that you could just take a second to hmm. address the shooting spree that spanned from Denver to Lakewood Monday night, where a man killed five people and injured two more, including a police officer. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, just a, a horrific, uh, horrific tragedy. And and uh, it looks like that there were indications of, 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 of uh, potential violence in earlier writings of, of this individual. Uh, he obviously didn't get the, the help that he needed. Um, this is a tragedy for our community. Uh, I really extend my condolences to the families of those who lost loved ones. 
Um, I know people who know people who were, were killed in, in this episode, and I know that many of us do. Colorado is a small community, um, but it really shows our need to really uh, increase our support for law enforcement, uh, more and better policing, uh, making sure that we are uh, detaining and, and convicting criminals. Uh, in this case, obviously, um, uh, the, the criminal died in, in the act. But um, at this point, I just want to send my heartfelt condolences to the families. I know that Colorado is going to redouble our efforts uh, to fight crime. Our final question comes from Lauren. Go ahead, Lauren. Lauren? Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Okay, um, a lot of uh, empty shelves with those um, at-home testing kits uh, here in Southern Colorado. Just wondering if there's been any plan to get more shipped to Colorado. Um, I know you have the the state um, program and it takes a couple of days to get those to the folks at home. Just wondering if you are planning to set up any more uh, rapid testing sites here in so Southern Colorado. Yeah, I would encourage folks to go to the uh, state fairgrounds in Pueblo, uh, to um, Chapel Hills Mall in Colorado Springs, uh, many other test sites available. We have the uh, free program where you can get the test delivered right to your doorstep uh, in about a week or two. You can sign up online for that. But if you're experiencing symptoms, don't delay, right? Um, go to a free testing site uh, and you will get the result within one to two days. Uh, and uh, I, if you do test positive, I encourage you to stay hydrated, uh, stay away from others, isolate, focus on your recovery. And as long as you've been vaccinated, you have a very excellent chance of getting well without the need for any medical help. Thank you, everybody. And I want to wish everybody a happy and healthy new year.